The ink on the Washington Naval Treaty was barely dry, and Imperial Japanese Navy High Command was... Well, annoyed would be putting it rather mildly. They'd gone into the negotiations hoping to be treated like an equal, and instead they'd been forced to discontinue a treaty that had previously placed the world's largest navy, and indeed the navy they'd used as their template, on its side, and now brought its most likely opponent for the Pacific domination, the USA, into parity with that erstwhile ally, whilst also limiting the Japanese navy to 60% of the displacement of either. The new Tosa and Amagi classes would need to be scrapped or converted, and the Mutsu had only just scraped in as a permitted vessel. Still simmering at the limits imposed, the Imperial Japanese Navy Admiralty decided that if they couldn't beat the other powers at their own game of battleships, they'd simply have to outdo them in a field they'd foolishly left unlimited. Thus began the design of the Japanese special type destroyers. There had previously been large destroyers, fast destroyers, heavily gun armed destroyers, and heavily torpedo armed destroyers before. But now, the general staff demanded an ultra-fast, large, heavily armed destroyer with plenty of both guns and torpedoes. These would become the Tokugata, or special type, destroyers. What would eventually emerge from a somewhat protracted design process was a ship of 1750 tonne standard displacement, capable of 35 knots, using 50,000 shaft horsepower from four boilers, which drove a pair of screws. This was faster than almost all previous destroyers, but it was the armament that really stood out. Six dual-purpose 5-inch guns in three twin turrets, one forward and a pair superfiring aft. This was complemented by nine torpedo tubes in three triple launchers, two just forward of the aft guns and one positioned between the funnels, this latter having been moved there at a late stage in the design process when its original position, just forward of the bridge, was calculated as being too often immersed in sea spray. This was already a considerable amount of firepower, but each launcher was effectively a small torpedo turret which allowed for a full set of reloads to be carried, i.e. 18 torpedoes. Additionally, the torpedoes themselves were 24-inch weapons, which were considerably more capable and deadly than the standard 21-inch and 18-inch versions that were found on other destroyers. Other weaponry had originally been planned as a mix of 3-inch, 40mm and rifle calibre guns, but this was rationalised down to just a pair of heavy machine guns on the basis of weight saving and the fact that the main guns were dual purpose, thus in theory meaning the rest of the anti-aircraft armament was unnecessary. Now with all that said, things didn't start out particularly brilliantly. The first 10 units received main guns that could only elevate to 40 degrees instead of the 75 degrees that were originally planned, and which later ships would in fact receive. Also, it turned out they didn't actually have enough heavy machine guns around, and so initial deployments had to use the rifle calibre machine guns instead until more heavy weapons could be acquired. It also turned out that the rate of fire and tracking capability of the main 5-inch guns wasn't quite as fast as they'd first hoped, which limited their anti-aircraft capability somewhat. Nonetheless, the remaining capabilities were still leaps and bounds ahead of anything else in the water at that size when they began to appear in the late 1920s. The first group were laid down in 1926 and 27, and would start to enter service in 1928 and 29. The second group, with full elevation to their guns, was mostly laid down in 1928 and 29 and began entering service in 30 and 31. A final group, the Type 3s, were laid down in 1930 and entered service in 1932. As designed, the ships were only supposed to have had whole numbers, but in 1928 this decision was reversed and they began to receive names, thus becoming what we now know to be the Fubuki class. The Type 2s are sometimes called the Ayanami subclass due to their slightly better elevation of their guns and improved fire control systems, whilst the Type 3s are considered to be the Akatsuki subclass as they used a new higher pressure boiler to allow for the same amount of power with three boilers as opposed to the four present in previous ships, as well as having yet another turret type, this one much lighter than that on the Type 2s, but only capable of 55 degree elevation. In all, 24 ships across the three types would be built, 
with various minor additions accreting weight on the ship's upper works. This, combined with a number of weight-saving measures taken during construction, would come back to bite them in two incidents in the early 1930s. First, the new torpedo boat Tomozuru was on its first major exercises in 1934 when it encountered heavy weather and promptly rolled over and sank. The investigation pointed to the overly heavy upper works, but before anyone could do much to change this on other ships, the fourth fleet was caught in a typhoon, and almost every ship took damage in large part due to overly light construction. This would lead to a crash program of changes. The bridges and funnels were all trimmed down, magazine stowage was reduced, and the reloads on the aftmost and foremost torpedo launchers were also removed. Fuel bunkers were increased in capacity as this meant that there was more weight lower down in the ship, and extra plating and riveting was added for strength and also to ensure that even more weight was present closer to the keel. This dramatically improved the stability and strength of the ships, although it did push their displacement to just over 2,000 tonnes and would drop speed by about a knot. A number of ships of the Type 2 subclass would also receive the newer and lighter turrets that had been designed for the Type 3s, although this did drop the main gun elevation back down to 55 degrees, but as we've seen, that wasn't exactly a huge loss. Shortly before all this had kicked off, the older torpedoes had in fact been replaced with the newer Type 93, or Long Lance, torpedoes, which improved their lethality somewhat. The outbreak of World War II would find 23 ships in service, as Miyuki had been lost in a collision. And as the war progressed, more and more anti-aircraft guns would be added, which was good. Unfortunately, they were almost entirely Type 96 weapons, the infamous 25mm, which was not so good. Even to the point of replacing one of the aft turrets with a pair of triple 25mm mounts on some ships that had managed to make it to the latter half of the war. These lucky survivors would also begin to receive basic radar in 1944. Stuck in the thick of the action, almost the entire class would be lost, with only the badly damaged Ushio, a Type 2 ship, surviving from the entire first two batches, and one of the four Type 3s, the Hibiki, make it, made it through mostly intact. In the course of the conflict, they did however manage to make some account of themselves, being responsible for sinking quite a few Allied merchantmen and warships, as well as assisting in the destruction of others and damaging still more, with one particular incident seeing the Type 2 Amagiri sink PT-109 with a certain John F. Kennedy aboard by ramming it clean in two. Of the two survivors, Ushio would never be repaired and was scrapped in 1948, but Hibiki, under a new name, would end up in Soviet service for a few years before becoming a barrack ship, also in Soviet service, and then eventually being sunk as a target at some point in the 1970s, with her wreck near Vladivostok still available for diving if you happen to be in the area. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.